I am a little hungry. Of course, Robin. Even crime fighters must eat. And especially you. You're a growing boy and you need your nutrition. Every great metropolis has a silent avenger. A secret paragon of truth, justice, and equality. And typically speaking, these iconic do-gooders have one thing in common. They all have sidekicks. Teenage accomplices of the hero in question, charged with taking up the creed and legacy of their mentors. And yet, the more these beloved four-color vigilantes are adapted into billion-dollar film franchises, the less we see of their adolescent supporting acts. Let's face it, the superhero sidekick is a thing of the past. Before we get too deep into today's episode, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more superhero videos just like this. Undoubtedly, when thinking of a superhero sidekick, the first one that leaps to mind is Dick Grayson, aka Robin. While today's episode isn't exclusively a Robin episode, it's going to feature a lot of discussion about the boy wonder, because inarguably, he's the most iconic sidekick. Chicks dig the car. This is why Superman works alone. Robin was created for two reasons. The first was a simple sales ploy. DC Comics and Bat creators Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and Jerry Robinson were attempting to appeal to the primarily young readership of the book. While Batman might have been initially introduced as a brooding, gun-wielding anti-hero, everyone involved with the character rapidly figured out that the quickest way to make money was to sell him to the reader base of mostly children. The second reason Robin was created was purely logistical, to give Batman someone to talk to. While Jerry Robinson was the person primarily responsible for pushing the idea that Batman would have a Robin Hood-themed sidekick, it was Bill Finger who built out all of the narrative real estate that was given to the character. As quoted in Steranko's History of Comics, Finger relayed the creation as such. Robin was an outgrowth of a conversation I had with Bob. As I said, Batman was a combination of Douglas Fairbanks and Sherlock Holmes. Holmes had his Watson. The thing that bothered me was that Batman didn't have anyone to talk to, and it got tiresome always having him thinking. But this archetype of a young companion aiding the adult superhero in their war on injustice wouldn't be a one-off. The formula proved so successful that teen or child sidekicks became all the rage across basically every publisher. From Bucky to Toro to Speedy to Donna Troy to Superboy to Jubilee, basically every superhero at one point or another has been given a teen sidekick in order to attempt to sell books. And they worked. But these characters serve a much more noble purpose than just simply attempting to pull in a younger audience. They serve as a grounding element to the heroes. This is ironic considering the idea of an 11-year-old child learning martial arts and using his familial gymnastic skills to take up a life of crime fighting is pretty unbelievable. And yet, this type of logic has been a staple of sidekicks for close to 80 years, with Robin being the prime example. But here's the thing. When sidekicks are brought into other mediums, they're usually aged up. Robins only appeared in two incarnations on the big screen in live action. Once in Batman the Movie from 1966, and then again in the two Batman films directed by Joel Schumacher. In his prestige adaptation, the character is taken in by Bruce Wayne after the murder of his family. The only problem being, he's being played by Chris O'Donnell, who at the time of the film's release was 25 years old. Yeah, he was a grown man who could have had a master's degree and entered the workforce, but instead, he was doing karate laundry in Wayne Manor. Robin's youth and innocence serves as a ray of hope in Bruce Wayne's dour world. He's there to smile, laugh, and remind Bruce that the world can be brimming with optimism. The world of Batman, as with all superheroes, is an ecosystem of symbols that are just as important in their world as they are in ours. There have been a few close calls with Robin almost making it to the big screen over the years. In fact, he was going to appear in each of Tim Burton's Batman films, with Marlon Wayans literally being cast in returns and then being paid not to appear in the final film. Why was he cut? Because the powers that be were worried that introducing a teen sidekick would make our protagonist seem less grim and gritty, that the film wouldn't be taken as seriously. I'm just jealous because I'm a genuine freak and you have to wear a mask! <laughs> This underlying concern is the primary driving force behind basically every sidekick in comics history either being cut or aged up prior to the cameras rolling on their big screen outings. Captain America appeared on film three separate times prior to the MCU. All three of them refused to acknowledge Bucky. And even though Bucky might be a global icon now, who has legions of internet fans, the character is significantly aged up in his first Avenger role. 
Is the character well portrayed? Yes, but he also serves as an example of how these companies have to do backflips to justify the idea of a sidekick. Marvel Studios only tolerated the idea of Bucky because they knew the Winter Soldier was around the corner. Think of it this way. Batman has appeared in 13 live action feature films. Tim Drake's Robin has never been in one of the movies. Over the course of the existence of superhero movies, the genre was initially viewed as goofy kids fare. However, as projects like Donner's Superman, Burton's Batman, and Blade brought credibility to the genre, it began to blossom. The 90s and early 2000s saw an influx of adaptations of beloved properties, most with an emphasis on grounded realism. Sure, the X-Men were on the screen, but they were wearing black leather. From there, after almost 20 years of comics being adapted and many of the trappings, tropes, and visual accoutrements of the genre making their way onto the big screen, sidekicks still aren't really there. Hollywood still thinks the audience's suspension of disbelief will be broken by seeing a 12-year-old flipping around and kicking criminals in the face, which is deeply strange because it's literally been done before. Kick ass. Okay. See what you can do now. Yeah, Hit Girl and Big Daddy are pretty much just a satirical send up of the 1966 Burt Ward and Adam West dynamic, but with a bit more violence. Which frankly is a quality that two out of the four primary Robins have already become closely associated with. So are we living in a world that will soon see a rush of teen sidekicks? No, probably not. A core element of these characters is their youth and vitality, something which their big screen or even small screen counterparts just seem incapable of ever really accepting. The primal innocence of youth apparently flies in the face of every version of the adaptation of these characters, regardless of how grounded or whimsical the specifics of the story they might be appearing in are. Take for example the antipathy towards the idea of the sidekick displayed in Zack Snyder's version of the Bat Family. Robin is literally more interesting dead than alive. Can't have a little kid running around the world where Batman brands people, right? Jesus Christ. He branded him. Even look at the Titans TV show, that's a show literally composed almost exclusively of former sidekicks who all form a team. And they have to be grounded in this gritty nihilism so deeply it almost fails to resemble the Titans. There's something intrinsically innocent, primarily colored, and uplifting about teen or child sidekicks. They obviously wouldn't be right for every version of these superhero worlds, but come on! They've literally only made it to live action a handful of times, and they almost never reflect their comic book counterparts. Rick Jones isn't in the MCU. Wonder Girl? Nowhere. Aqualad? Nope. Superboy? Nada. It's frustrating. You'd think they would be around, but you'd be wrong because these studios are desperate to have these characters taken seriously, even when the films themselves are overtly comedies. Superheroes are supposed to remind us who we should aspire to be. They should push us to reach for our utmost potential. And what is more important than having characters that are the appropriate age for the intended audience to truly internalize these lessons? These characters give these stories a completely unique lens to view the world. They teach young people that even if it seems impossible, that there's always a hope. There's always a way to continue. Plus, they give the protagonist someone to talk to. Well, that's all we have for this episode. Who's your favorite teen sidekick? Let us know down in the comments below. And as always, please be sure to subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more videos just like this one.